am so, so, so blessed by your worship, but even more importantly, the grace and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives and especially in this room. It is good and pleasant to be here today with you in unity. Amen. You can sense a unity of the Spirit. It's a deeper unity than what we understand on a day-to-day level. In the natural sense, we may be um, of the same nation, we may speak the same language, we may be unified by some politics or uh, some cause, and that is a spirit of unity. But in this house today, I sense a unity of the spirit. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And I love what the body does when the body is connected and is in unity and of one mind and one accord. And you don't get that way through isolation and just being alone in the woods, as Doug and Sarah so aptly put it today. We need relationship connection. That is where every joint supplieth. That is where God maketh increase in the body, increasing us individually and increasing us as the whole body of Christ. We are espoused to be the bride of Christ. Amen? That is our destiny. Amen? Sometimes you just have to look in the mirror and say, I said yes. I'm engaged. Right? Hallelujah. (laughs) We are engaged to be married. There will be a marriage. Amen. I want to pause and and just take a little breath here. We're going to jump right back into that same flow of the Spirit here in a moment. Are you you guys ready to go a second round of of worship and praise to the King of Kings? Amen. But I want to pause and, and just take a moment to say thank you. To all of you who, over the holidays, um, the Christmas, Thanksgiving, just lavished us with so many wonderful gifts, cards, texts, handwritten notes and letters, food. We're starting our fast, so we we tried to clean all that food (laughs) up. Get, get it all eaten. We received offerings from some of you, pictures. My wife says, thank you for the pictures. She just loves pictures and faces and smiles and children and all that stuff. And there's so many more things. People built crafts and brought them to us as an offering and show their love to us in so many, many ways, and we receive it, we bless you for it, and we just thank you again for your love. And Ben and Lindsay said ditto, because our youth pastor and executive pastors, Pastor Ben and Pastor Lindsay, were so blessed this year. Just every week I would look up and see us pile of gifts and cards laying on their seat over there. 2023 is a significant year. We're going to focus on the word of the Lord. We received a word from the Lord last week from uh, Sister Lois, and we are um, 
We're not going to move on from that word. We're going to build on that word. Amen? Amen. The Lord speaks. We listen. This is a year of in-gathering, gathering to assemble. This is a year of unity. This is a year of angelic encounters that will be become almost normal to you. You just carry on a conversation with somebody and you'll not realize maybe even that you've been in an encounter with a messenger from the Lord. And I expect those encounters, signs and wonders in the earth. Amen? Signs. I like signs. I like to be things to be signified that are going on. But I also like wonders. Children <clears throat> really live in a world of wonder. And I, I watch Simeon play sometimes, and I just sit and watch him, and I just think such wonder that he lives in. And, and he'll tell me sometimes, he'll say, well, I don't know about those things. Papa, I'm just a little boy. <laughs> and I asked him this morning when Doug and Sarah were up here, I said, are you in a grow group? <clears throat> he said, I'm a little boy. <laughs> he reminds me that his life is so full of wonder. And God chose to call us at <clears throat> 30 and 50 and 60 and 80 the children of God, because he wants you to never lose the wonder. Signs and wonders, the things that make you go, hmm, right? (laughs) Things happen and you wonder how it happened. You wonder what was that. You wonder how it could be so good. Those are the wonders that God wants his children to to be part of. Amen? Imagine, dream, dream big, plan, and expect God to blow your mind in 2023. Today I'm going to share with you a message titled, From the Well to the Tent. From the Well to the Tent. We're going to find our main text in Genesis chapter 24. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. If you have your pages Bible, it's a lengthy reading, so I'm going to read it with my device, but I encourage you to have that pages Bible ever present with you and use it especially in these next 21 days as we have lengthy readings to do. Let your children see you with the Word of God in your Hand. They don't know what you're doing when you're on a device or a phone, but they know when you're holding a Bible that you're not playing a game or looking up information on Google. You're searching the scriptures. Amen? And the Word of God even itself tells us to study that Word. And every time we read it, it's something new, isn't it? So, Lord, as we open your Word today, give us revelation into who you are. And revelation into who we are in you. Open our minds, open our soul, and Lord, speak even into the depths of our spirit with your word. For your words are spirit and life unto the hungry. Feed us with manna from on high. Carry us these 21 days that we consecrate and dedicate to you our time, our devotion, our love, and yes, even the food that we eat for substance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I will introduce this passage so we don't read the whole thing. It is a lengthy reading, but I'm not, it could be more lengthy, so I'm going to abbreviate the first part of it. Abraham had buried his wife, Sarah. You know about, most of you know about Abraham and Sarah. In their old age, God gave them a son. And Abraham has Isaac, uh, up to somewhere around 30, 35 years old, and Sarah passes away at the age of 125. And as the chapter changes, so the new things of God 
are set before Abraham. Here again, Abraham comes to a life-altering moment at around 135 years old. God decides to do something new in Abraham. You know, when God made the promise to Abraham he was going to have a son, he was like 90, you know? And, and so no matter your age, no matter how much life you've lived, no matter how much uh, limitation you might have in the natural, believe me, God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life, and you're not, it's not too late. Look at somebody and say, it's not too late. So let this year, this new year, be a new chapter in your life, a new attitude, a new commitment. And maybe you'll see this chapter as Abraham and Isaac did, that God intends to do something great. Abraham buries his wife Sarah, Isaac, who was Sarah's only son, was stricken with grief. But God knows how to comfort you in your grief. If you lost a spouse this past year, you can relate to Abraham in this moment of time that we're reading. You can find yourself in the story very personally today. Abraham had established a covenant with God at age 75. So Genesis 24 Verse 1 starts this way. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, which spake unto me that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this oath. Only bring not my son thither again. So regardless of whether this works or it doesn't, Hear me and be clear and understand me. You're not to take my son there. God made it clear to Abraham and Abraham made it clear to his servant that there was restrictions on how this thing was going to play out. There were limits as to what extent Abraham would, was willing to go to bring a wife to his son Isaac. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the, by the, without the city by the well of water at the time of the evening. Even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master, Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. 
And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my, my master. It's okay to tell God what you want. It's okay to be specific in your prayer. This servant gave exactly to the Lord what he wanted to see happen. Sometimes the more specific your prayer, the more clearly you know and get the answer. And sometimes more specifically, uh, the more specific you give parameters for making decisions like this, the better it is in the long run. And it came to pass before he had done speaking, while he was still yet praying unto the Lord. I like that. Don't you like that? You start praying, and before you even are finished praying, it comes to pass. Now, it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebecca, everybody say Rebecca, Rebecca came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abram, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder, and the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up, and the servant ran to meet her, and said, Let me, I pray thee, Drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher that was upon her head and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher in the trough and ran again to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. Keep your finger right there in your Bible. We're going to skip down a few verses. Here we find the very exact parameters that the servant had given played out by Rebecca, who had never met this man, had no idea who he was. And the thing that blows my mind is the Scripture said earlier he had ten Camels. What woman in her right mind agrees to draw water for a man's camels with ten camels? Amen? So keep that in your mind as you're thinking along this story and, and put yourself in Rebecca's place and think about what you're willing to do to fulfill the destiny, and the purpose of your life. You fast forward, and we understand that Isaac and Rebekah did get together, right? We see this story already ahead of the, of the book. And we know that out of them came Jacob, who was named Israel, who you read about in your news today. Amen? So this is a big deal. What if Rebecca would have counted camels and multiplied gallons and thought about that shoulder that was going to carry the up, up and down those that flight of stairs from the well back up to where the camels were and pour it into the trough and back down into the well and back up. Perhaps she had places to be. Perhaps she was there on a mission. Perhaps that pitcher or, or that jug of water she was hauling around had a purpose and a destiny and somebody was waiting on that water to, to boil up dinner. Maybe there was a baby waiting to be bathed. I don't know. But what I'm sure there was something in her mind 
that she had to climb over to fulfill the destiny and answer the prayer and become the angel that God had intended her to be in this scenario. But when God says he'll do it, and he said he'll send an angel before you, you can just walk it out. Amen? The servant didn't have to negotiate. He didn't have to throw on any charm. He didn't have to build it up, pump it up, prime it up. Amen? My word to you today is that God is gathering a bride among the virgin, the pure. And my word to you today is that he is sending angels before you. And that when you walk into the marketplace, when you go down to the well, there's going to already be an angel before you preparing the way. And God is about to bring a harvest into your life if you are willing to walk it out. This is about, to, God is moving this passage, this story in my spirit in a, in a powerful way. And I believe he wants to show us something about his pure virgin bride today. The Bible said that the, the, in the passages we're about to read that the servant speaks to Laban and to Bethuel. This is the brother and the father of Rebekah. Laban means, the name Laban, the Hebrew names have meaning, amen? Laban means to be white. Well, now there's an easy parallel from the book of Revelation all the way back to Genesis, amen? You, you, are you with me? You know what, what's going to be white? Huh? The bride, us, amen? Bethuel means virgin house of God. We know Bethel means house of God. Bethuel means virgin house of God. Judgment begins at the house of God. It is imperative. It is part of the narrative that God will purge his church. He's coming for a pure, unadulterated bride for himself. Amen? All right. Verse 43. Jump down all the way there. Behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall, he's talking to Laban and Bethuel. And it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw the water, I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink thou, and I will draw for thy camels. Let the same woman be the woman whom the Lord had appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down to the well and drew the water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. She made haste and let me drink. She took her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands, and I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife. As the Lord has spoken. This is how it works when the angel goes before you, when you clearly hear from the Lord, and when you pray according to the word the Lord has spoken unto you. 
It's important that you read God's word and you receive and hear the promises of the Lord from the Lord and then pray it out according to the will of God and the word that you have been given and watch God perform his word before your very eyes. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Right there is where God has every one of us in this hour, in this new year. Will you go with Jesus? Will you be willing to forsake everything that you've ever known? Are you at a place where you say, God, I will go? This is the heart matter. This is how we have to posture ourselves over these 21 days of prayer and fasting and reading the word. Get to the place where you say, God, I will go. I will go. They sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions. And let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. <laughs> and these guys just turned right around and prophesied over her future, didn't they? And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. The servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well Leharuai, for he dwelt in the south country. He's at a well too. How about that? He's coming from a well. Rebecca's coming from a well. Hello? I like this. Amen? Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. Hallelujah. <laughs> we shall behold him. Amen. And I hope when we see his face, something will move us off our camel. All right. Amen. I wonder about some folks. But by the end of these 21 days, I say we're all going to be lighted off our camels. All right. I think that's a good thing. For she said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. So he takes this story and he tells it again. Okay, so he, he gets, he's living the story. He tells it to Laban and Bethuel. He tells it to God and the angels. Then he, it happens and he comes back. And he tells it again to Isaac. Look at somebody and say, be ready to tell your story. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. And she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted. After his mother's death. Somebody here today. God wants to comfort you. You've been at the well. You've been grieving. You've been struggling. You've been distraught. Depressed. Forsaken, felt like you were forsaken, although you're not. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes we feel forsaken, right? Anybody here ever felt forsaken, forgotten? You're not alone. You're not forsaken. You're not forgotten. 
God's about to take you from, oh, thank you, from the well to the tent. Amen? Look at somebody say, I'm looking forward to the tent. So we find, I want to just give you a few points about this story. I'm going to take my time and just deliberately teach, preach a little, okay? We used to call it treaching. <laughs> God is seeking out a bride for his son. Be it unto me, God, I will go. Be it unto me according to your word. Let whatever your destiny, your purpose is for my life, I'm all in. This is where the story leads me. Before you even finish speaking your prayers in this hour that we're living in now. Somebody say now. Now your prayers are being answered even as you speak. Prayers are being answered quickly. This is a prophetic word for you for right now. You're in a time when prayers are being answered even as you speak. questions we have to ask is, will I be at the well? Will I be in the place where God wants me to be? The next question is, will I go the extra mile? Do I have that servant's heart that says, yes, I will give you drink, but not only that, I'll feed those 10 thirsty camels with the humps on their back that holds gallons of water. I got your back. I'll cover you, right? I'll do this. I'll go the extra mile. Will you go the extra mile? See, today's Christian is the Christian of the minimal. Do I have to do this to be saved? We, re we embrace a message of the minimal. All you got to do is just sign right here. All you need to do is just repeat after me. That's it. You're good. Check. Next. And we just line people up and tell them, all you got to do is just do this. And some groups, you know, it might be say this prayer. Some groups it might be confess this, believe this. I don't know. You know, different groups give different methods and means. Some Say, oh, it's step one, two, three. Once you get to three, pew, you're shot off into heaven and you're good to go. Amen? But how many times as a minister do people ask us, what's the minimum requirement for me to get in? Just give me the, I, I got this. <clears throat> so many Christians say, oh, I, you know, I attend church once in a while. Oh, I'm a Christian. I, <clears throat> I got the, the minimal package. <laughs> yeah, I got the bargain deal on salvation. I got that free one. I don't have to do anything. I don't ever have to show up. Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. Well, yes, he did pay it all, but there's more for us. Amen. There's a lifelong commitment. It's all in. Will you go the extra mile? Or will you be asking what the minimum requirements are and how much flesh you can keep alive as you try to navigate this journey? The old saying is, it's hard to live for God easy, but it's easy to live for God hard. All in. Water baptism. The infilling of the Holy Ghost, paying tithes and going above and beyond just the tent and giving offerings besides and being obedient and willing to give, give, give anywhere, anytime, any place, giving what God has called you to give to anyone who is hungry, needy, thirsty. The thing I noticed in this story is the way the servant opened the door for this whole thing was through testimony. I think the church of the living God 
if there's anything we ought to learn in our discipleship ministry, it's how to share our testimony, how to personally tell people what God has done for us. I love that first song that we, or that second song we did. I love the first song too. Don't get me wrong. I like that first song. But that second song said, let me tell you about my Jesus. We need to get that in our spirit. Everybody we see, every place we go, we need to have that just right on the tip of our tongue. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He'll make a way where there is no way. Yeah, that's my Jesus. I can't heal you, but I know a man who can. Woo! <laughs> I said, I know a man who can. Let me tell you about my Jesus. In this story, it was telling this over and over again that caused it to happen. The third time he told the story, it happened. <clears throat> you may not share your testimony one time and see a whole room full of people come to Jesus. You may not stand as Billy Graham in front of thousands and even millions perhaps and Share your testimony and watch altars fill up. But if you can share it over and over and over again, one-on-one, -on -one, watching one heart, one soul light up and find hope in that story, keep on telling your story. And they overcame him. See, the, the folks that we're inviting into the bride are held, they are the rightful property right now of Laban and Bethuel. They're being held by authorities right now. The Bible says you are servants to whoever you yield your members to. There's folks that have yielded their self unto all kinds of stuff. Spirits, principalities, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. We're going to snatch them out of the hands of the spirits and the authorities that hold them by sharing with them our testimony that will pull them out. Let me tell you about my Jesus. As it relates to the church, We've been through some stuff. The body of Christ is stricken with age, I would venture to say, because for 2,000 years this church has been being built by the Lord. And we could, we could look around and say, well, it's the same old thing, same old song, same old message, same old this and that and the other, and get miserable in our age and just start looking for the way out. Sarah's dead. I'm old. Not much else can happen. But Abraham didn't give up. He looked to the next generation. If you've been serving the Lord a long time, start pouring into the next generation. Start speaking prophetically over the next generation. Use your resources. He gave all the resources he had to one servant and said, use whatever you have to do. Put it all out there. Take ten camels. Do whatever you got to do. I want to see this bride come home to my son Isaac. By the way, Isaac was 35. It seems to add up in the math. And in this culture... Young men married very, very young, usually. And so 35 to find a bride was very unusual. So I don't know what that means, but I know that it's never too late. Amen? Don't give up. And don't give up on winning a soul. Don't give up on finding a mate. Don't give up on God bringing comfort into your life, Isaac. So let's go now to the tent. 
Are y'all ready for tent experience? Well, I remember tent revivals. They were pretty good. We had some good tent revivals. But my message today is from the well to the tent. It was Sarah's tent, the Bible said, that Isaac and Rebekah went into. And he took her to be his wife in Sarah's tent. I remember, let's go back to Genesis chapter 18. I remember this story where the angel comes to Abraham and gives him a promise of having a son. And it was in this same tent. The angel said to Abraham in verse 9 of chapter 18, where is, your, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, she's in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. He said, well, she's 80. Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? And 36 years later, this tent was converted from a tent of laughing to a tent of conception and consummation. How about that? God takes the places where sometimes we cannot imagine anything happening, anything good. Everything's dead. It's over. There's no way anything could ever happen. And we just laugh at the possibility of God doing the mighty things that he intends to do. God fulfilling his covenant and his promise seems impossible to you. God wants to take you from laughing and fear and doubt and worry and move you into a place where you can conceive. So the place of laughter will become a place of promise if you trust God. The old things of the church that must die will make room for the new thing that God is doing. The new thing God is doing will comfort and heal you of church hurt. It will comfort and heal you of loss, of abuse. The thing God's doing is a thing of new life, a thing of new beginnings a thing of hope and joy, a thing of multiplication. You see, Abraham just had one son. Isaac had twins. One of those twins was Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons. I only have 10 fingers, but he had 12 sons. How about that? God is a God of multiplication. Will you be willing to abide with him in a new land? Are you ready to see God take old things and make them all new? Turn to Isaiah 43. Because God is moving us today from the well to the tent. God has something great in store for you. If you're willing to keep going to the well and keep drawing water, your moment's going to come. The servant's going to show up. And look at you and say, will you give me a drink? Somebody at your work is going to ask you the right question. Somebody at your marketplace is going to ask you the right question. Some server at your table is going to ask you the right question. If you'll just keep going to the well. Be at the right place at the right time. But it's really, really important that you don't stay at the well. So many people have well experiences and they stay at the well. Woo! Huh? Remember the woman at the well Jesus met? How awesome was that? 
Everything about Isaac and Rebekah's story is a type and shadow of the Samaritan woman. Jesus walks up to her and says, would you give me to drink? Just like Isaac's servant walked up and asked for a drink. And out of that one well experience, the whole city of Samaria came to Jesus. But don't get stuck at the well. Just because the well is so good, just because you met Jesus there, don't stay at the well. I encourage you, I invite you to move from the well. Get on that camel and come on over to the tent and look for him. And when you see him, get off of that camel and get to the tent with Jesus. Because that's where comfort is going to happen. Isaiah 43 says in the message translation, But now... God's message, the God who made you in the first place, Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel, don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called your name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're a, between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end because I am your God, your personal God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you, all of Egypt, with rich Cush and Seba thrown in. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back. Trade the creation just for you. And verse 16 says, this is what God says. The God who builds a right road through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waters. The God who summons horses and chariots and armies, they lie down and then they get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert. Rivers in the badlands. Wild animals will say thank you. The coyotes and buzzards because I provided water in the desert. Rivers through the sun-baked earth, drinking water for the people I chose, the people I made especially for myself, a people custom-made to praise me. Would you stand? A lot of good things are going to happen at the well, at the marketplace, out there in the streets, in your homes. But I would say God is raising up his tent again. The house of God is going to become a place of promise. Yes, yes, yes. It's imperative that you continue to come to the tent. I speak to people out there watching online. You find it so easy to sit at home with your coffee. Turn up the volume in your living room and watch whatever church service you want to watch because you like to be in charge. You like to have a say-so. You like to control the environment. But God says, come on into the tent. Surrender yourself to the tent where somebody can comfort you. Come on, surrender yourself to the tent where it's the place of promise and conception. I invite you to come from the well to the tent in your spirit today. Lord, I believe you and trust you. And everyone under the sound of my voice is hearing your call today. Willing, Lord, to lay it all down. Because just like you miraculously moved on the heart of Rebecca and moved on the heart of her father and her brother to release her, the things that hold souls bound in the earth is being moved. You are opening and unlocking resources and doors and places in the earth that we've never dreamed of. But we're willing today, God to go the extra mile. We're willing today to lay down our life and give it all up to provide for those that are serving you. 
Somebody is waiting on me. Somebody is waiting on you. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you unlock the, the voice of testimony in the earth. I pray in the name of Jesus that as you're gathering your bride, that you show us the signs and wonders in the earth, that these Old Testament stories no longer are just a neat story about how history unfolded, but we see your hand in it, and we know that the same God that provided for Isaac will provide for me. Yes, the same God that gave Isaac Rebecca will give Jesus his bride yes, in the end time, and that what's going to happen in the tent is going to be amazing. You're going to do things that we've never seen before. You are working in your people. You are working in the earth. And there is more for us to receive and to hear and to know. Unlock your word in our minds as we enter into these 21 days. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I'm praying for your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor, that God will bring them from the well to the tent because he loves you. He's wooing you. Come on to him. Let's gather to the front together. This beginning of this new year, the beginning of this fast, let God do something right now.
Anybody feel like you've moved a little closer to the tent today? A little closer? I'm willing to go, Lord. One of my utmost prayers for 23 is as the church, this river body grows in number, that God raise up leaders and shepherds and people with compassion to love and reach out. Our pastoral ministry and care for the body and shepherding here at the river is very heavily dependent on the grow group system and the way it works. If you're not part of a grow group, then it makes it a little more hard for you to connect in a real, deep, and personal way. And you don't have to you know, go to somebody's house at once a week to be a part of a grow group. There's lots and lots of ways you can sign up. We have monthly groups. We have larger groups. We have smaller groups. We have a lot of individual type things. So I encourage you to find a way to connect in that way to one of our shepherds, leaders, pastors. I also am praying, asking God to raise up people that would say, I'd be willing to shepherd a handful of folks. I feel like I'm called of God to love people. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to have a seminary degree to love people. Amen? Amen? We can go through a little bit of training with Doug and Sarah, and, and we can get you started. You don't even have to have a, a house that you would invite people to come into. We'll provide rooms and make, make way. There may be somebody else who has a house that's a great host but don't want to have the responsibility or don't have the time maybe to lead or shepherd. So how many of you, just slip your hand up and say, I'd be willing to pray about helping in those different ways of ministry. I'd be willing to consider that. I, I believe God's calling me to something, and I, I want to help out in shepherding souls and leading people. Amen? Doug and Sarah, I see about 25 hands. Amen? So during this 21 days of prayer and fasting, if you're serious about that, Put that on your focus and press into that. Give Doug and Sarah your name and say, I don't know if I'm ready yet. I don't know where, how, what it looks like, but I want to help make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. I want to make sure that the people of the river are cared for. I want to do my part. And they'll help you pray about it. They'll consider it. The Lord may drop it on them exactly what that looks like for you to be a part of that ministry. And I thank you for pressing into that and doing, just doing a little bit of legwork today to get that started and open that door and see what God will do. Go that extra mile because the bride that he is about to come and get is going the extra mile. We're, we're all in. There's no more game, no more play, church, no more gimmicks. That's all done. We tried it, been there, done that, come full circle, and we're back to just saying, okay, Lord, I will. Here I am, send me. Amen. God's favorite way to win a soul is you. That's, that's his first, you're, his, you're plan A. You are plan A. Amen, balloons and hay rides and candy rains and smoke and mirrors that's all plan B, C, D, E, F or whatever but God's plan A is where we're headed that's what we're doing right now we're doing plan A amen Rofika is plan A amen grow groups is plan A Sunday worship is plan A let's do it all in 
Look at somebody and say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Here, here I am, Lord, send me. Let's go and do this thing. If you don't have the scriptures for uh, this week, you'll get a text. If you don't get text from us, fill out the card on the hayloft to make sure you get the text. And if you don't have a phone that receives text at all, we have paper copies of those scriptures for you. And they're free, and you can take those with you. Our scripture theme is found in Ephesians chapter 5, where it says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This 21 days is about getting us empty, emptied out of all the worldly influence in our lives and being filled up with His Spirit. No room for anything else in us but the Spirit of God, that we might be Spirit-led, Spirit-filled, Spirit-led. And the Lord says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Read the verses we've assigned for you and ask God to point out from that what it is you are to meditate on. And he may add to that. You may, you may read that and then he may lead you into another direction or something more with that. Absolutely, perfectly fine for you to hear the Spirit and go deeper into the things of God. But in unity, let's do the fast these 21 days. Let's do the scripture reading these 21 days. And let's pray every morning at 7 o'clock together. For those who possibly can, you'll get a link. We'll open you up to a prayer service being led by the Church of the Highlands in Birmingham. And we'll all be doing that together as a church family every morning at 7 a.m. if you're if it's possible for you to do that, if not, pray along with us when you can. 23, it's your year. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Lord, we decree and declare over this body that we will go forth. We will be found at the well. We will be found inviting in your bride. We will be harvesting your souls. We will say yes to your voice. We will bring in to the tent the people that you have destined to come and call your bride in. Bring in the prodigals, the lost, the hurting, the broken, the weary, the downtrodden. We ask you, Jesus, to bless and anoint this fast that we've called. We ask you to bless and anoint everyone who's committed to do that that you would use this time for your glory. Be magnified in us. Somebody in this room is going to be set free from habits of the flesh. Somebody in this room is going to be lifted from addiction. Somebody in this room's body is going to be healed and they're going to feel a supernatural move in the spirit realm. Cancer's going to die and fall off. Thank you, Jesus. According to the word of God, by his stripes we are healed. Somebody's going to be free from insulin dependence. Somebody's going to get off dialysis. Somebody's going to be set free from eating disorders. In the name of Jesus, fear and anxiety has to go. We believe and decree and declare your word will be alive and it'll be received and it'll be spoken out in our homes like never before. The song of victory, the shout of glory, and the roar of the lion come alive in this house, in every home, in every heart, in every way, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen, amen, amen. Just remind you our tithes and offerings we have black boxes over by the doors. There are about six of those. Thank you for your giving, your generosity. And we are uh, inviting you to bless the different departments of the church, the building fund, the ministries of the church, the media team, 
and we are growing and we thank you for that be blessed have a great day we'll see you wednesday at seven